Hey, welcome back. This is GN Inspire, where we share all things education, career, and personal development. Today, I will be telling you my story, how I got the Rhodes Scholarship back then in 2014, and then also we'll be sharing some tips and hacks that I think will make you stand out for some of you guys who are applying for the scholarship this year. So let's start. How did I know about the Rhodes Scholarship? So it's actually a classmate, as I have narrated in another episode. It's a classmate who was applying for scholarships and he made me aware of the Rhodes Scholarship. So one day in class, we were in final year of undergrad. I was studying in Kenya, Jumo Kenyatta University. And then one day in class, while we were wait, waiting for a, a lecturer to come in, he pushed a piece of paper with um, name of a scholarship website. This website is called Scholarships, Scholars for Dev or something like that. I'll put it here. So he pushed that website and he told me in after class, check that website and check the Rhodes Scholarship. That was the first time I got to know about the Rhodes Scholarship. I had never heard of it. So after class, I went searching for Wi-Fi uh and then I, I i googled it it did not take me long to realize that this thing is so prestigious and i think at that point i felt like we were or rather the guy was over trusting my abilities and so i was hesitant because number one the road scholarship is taken at the university of oxford i know there are exceptional cases where you can take the scholarship elsewhere but you have to be at oxford at one at what point at one point during your scholarship time and so number one i was just thinking okay so assume assume miracles happen and i win the scholarship how will i get to the university of oxford like the only oxford i knew at that time was the oxford english dictionary right and i think there is also i don't know just going through the kenyan system and in undergrad i think there is just this this tendency to look down upon our curricula or our institutions. Yes, we have a long way to go, but also there are some things we are doing right. This is in with something that I appreciate in hindsight. But then, yes, then I thought there is no way, no way, no way. One and only Oxford, the, one of the best universities in the world will accept me to study there. I was going for good grades but still i just thought my is there is no way oxford would would take my is from from kenya i don't know why maybe because i i had never i had never interacted with anybody who had gone to oxford and maybe that's why and also i think also just generally i the prospect of doing a master's after undergrad it was a possibility i had i had thought about it but not too strongly. I wanted to complete my undergrad, um, get a job, and that that was it. And so anyway, long story short, the the, the, the classmates, so I keep mentioning my classmates uh, because really the road scholarship happened because of the classmates. And I'll pause here to just emphasize that whether you like it or not, and I think I've, I've also mentioned in other episodes, the people, the company you keep, they will, influence your dreams the company you have they can either dim your light or amplify your light and so you be careful the people you keep around you if your friends are not pushing you and telling you of these good opportunities and telling you, you can do a b c d and pushing you forward and upwards then i think you should check your you should recheck your friends fr friends list but anyway, so I'm really appreciative. I really appreciate um, the classmate who saw that I had, I had, I had these characteristics that would make a road scholar. So anyway, he pushed me. Um, at some point, I, I, I was very poor. I still struggle. I've gotten better with writing, but I was very poor with persuasive writing. I could tell you my story, but if you tell me to write it, it was a different story. And so I was struggling to kind of explain who Gladys is, my aspirations, where I had come from, my dreams for the future and all that. With, with his help, we were able to draft 
some skeleton. And when I read whatever we had written or whatever we had drafted, it felt so persuasive and so strong. And so I was like, you know what? There is nothing we are losing. There was no application fee actually. And so this is, I think the, the application window happened between June and August. So I think this was sometime in July uh, or early August. I can't really remember. And so I was like, you know what? There is no application we needed and we've drafted something which I think sounds amazing. Let's just put it out. And so I submitted my, my application. And we'll talk briefly. I'll tell you, this was, I'm just telling you my story, how I got to know about um, the Rhodes Scholarship and my journey really of doubting myself initially, but then winning the scholarship in 2014 from Kenya. So we'll talk about the personal statement just in a few. But then I, we put out the, the application and late October of 2014, we were in our final semester, second, sec, second semester final year. I received an email inviting me or telling me that I was, I was shortlisted, one of the five shortlisted from Kenya that year. I later came to learn, I did not know how, I could just tell that this thing is pretty prestigious given that it's, it has to be taken at the University of Oxford. But I did not know like how many applicants were applying in Kenya. Later I came to understand over 1,000 or even sometimes 2,000 students apply every year. So anyway, it was that competitive. And so when I got the email telling me that I'd been shortlisted and I needed to attend a pre, they call it pre-selection dinner. I think sometimes they do a lunch or just a pre-meetup before the interview, just a session where you get to know other, other shortlisted candidates and you get to interact with the panelists just to remove that anxiety so that during the interview, you are a little bit yourself and the anxiety is a little bit down. So when the email came for the first time, for the first, first time, I actually, I actually believed, I actually believed that this thing was real because I don't think I had actually believed it, right? So I, 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 now it was getting exciting. But at the same time, I did not tell a single person, apart from my classmates, I don't think anyone else knew what I was up to. Even the day I was attending the pre-selection dinner at Muthaiga, some posh place in Nairobi, no one knew. I just took my matatu, I alighted at Muthaiga uh, and, 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 and footed to the to the it was it was happening the pre-selection dinner was happening at the at the british high commissioner's residence there so anyway during the pre-selection dinner i met the other four shortlisted candidates after the dinner i was sure 100 percent sure i was sure that i was not going to get it and i assumed they were going to select maybe one lady and a guy we there were two guys and we were three ladies and just hearing the other ladies or the other candidates speak with confidence, with assurity, like these guys were so confident. Yeah, I, I just felt, I just felt, I, I don't think I have a chance here. And by, by the end of the day, I, I, I thought I, there, there was no way they were going to select me. Somehow, I really didn't care so much during the interview. I was myself, I was so authentic. I could even tell the interviewer when they asked me, I remember one interviewer asked me a hard question that I did not have an answer. I told them, hey, to be honest, um, I have no answer to that question, but I'm happy to check later on. Um, and I, so, I, I said that so candidly because by the time I was going into the interview, based on what I had seen or with the interaction with other candidates, I, I just felt like this was not my thing. I just felt like the other candidates had more achievements they were they were they, they had more accomplishments and they were more confident i'll pause here to give another lesson to say for those of you guys who are applying and i know some of you have dm'd me and they're asking i've not done a, a, a lot not done much i don't think I, I can win this thing put your best foot forward prepare the best to your level best then leave the rest to the universe of god you never know. Maybe this year they're looking for someone like you. And then you are there doubting yourself. I was doubting myself a lot. I had not published a paper. 
I think the only thing that I had really because road scholarship for some of you guys who don't know road scholarship are big on leadership they are big on extracurricular and they are big on using your talents to serve the community and the world and of course good grades but so for me the only extracurricular thing I had was sports uh, I used to do uh, track I was running cross country and I was also a soccer player and I had some leadership leadership experiences so when I compared my kind of experiences or extracurricular activities with those of my shortlisted friends I thought mine they, they were nowhere close to theirs but this is what I learned later or well, someone was telling me I think sometimes some some of these selection committees not, not only for road scholarship I've been in a selection committee before not for road scholarship for another a grant sometimes they are looking for way more they are they are not looking at what you have now it could be little but where have you come from right so they try and contextualize and so i say what I I, I I i i i encourage you guys to write your story tell us where you've come from your your, your authentic story and put your best foot forward you never know you never know so do not doubt yourself anyone has a chance in this thing so early november did the interview the following day got the received the call that i had been selected one of the two scholars that year i was a 2015 road scholar from kenya and my life forever changed road scholarship has changed my life where i am whatever what i've been able to achieve They've, they've really amplified my passions. They've amplified my capabilities. And so it's an amazing scholarship and I wish you guys were applying all the best. So that is how I got to know about the Rose Scholarship and that is how I applied. Let me share three things here that I think you should, you should, you should keep in mind as you apply. The first one is personal statement. And I think you already know that they will use the stories you tell to should list you and so the first the first step is to write the best personal statement i will not go into details because i've made another episode a full episode a standalone episode just talking about personal statement tips and tricks on how to make it stand out so you go back to the previous videos and look for that um look for that episode where we, we i talked about personal statement but let me just say two things about personal statement whatever the format and i know road scholarship they prompt you something like tell us how you overcame a challenge in your life what would you like to learn from and contribute to the roads community from your place in the world how will you use your energy and talents to address humanity's pressing challenges so those are some of the prompts that they give regardless of the format or the prompts these two things you should not miss to address or to pay attention to as you write your personal statement. The first thing, quantify. And quantify, I mean, give percentages, give numbers. For instance, because they are big on performance. So as you write your academic statement or your personal statement, give numbers and percentages. Instead of saying, I was top, I was top of my class, it will make more, it will paint a clearer picture if you say, I was top 1% of my class, a class of 200 students something like that so give numbers give percentages for instance i would say i was elected road scholar in 2015 one of the only two scholars that year selected that year out of over 1000 applicants so you see that paints a different picture it shows that the thing was so competitive number two talking of showing show don't tell and go back to that uh, personal statement episode and you'll understand what i mean by showing and, and not telling but just roughly instead of telling us so they tell you how will you how will you use your passions and talents to serve um uh, the, the world or your community so instead of saying i'm passionate about solving humanity's uh, problems or solving challenges in my community anyone can say that anyone can tell us that but are there things that you can tell us that you've been doing already that then can show us that you actually believe in this thing? So you could say, I'm passionate about supporting my community and contributing to the world. Um, I'm, running, um, I'm running a charitable organization or a, or a community-based prog 
community-based organization in my community that has been growing 50% every year. We've supported over 50 students and counting. This is what we do. These are our accomplishments. We've been awarded this and this for the work that I've contributed or the work that I've been doing. I do all these things because I'm passionate about using my talents and my passions to help the world, something like that. So that case then we can believe because you are doing something already. So whatever the format, as you write your personal statement, do not forget to keep in mind those two things, quantifying and showing, not telling. More tips, check that personal statement episode. The second thing I want to tell you is about referees. And I think this is the part where we forget a lot or we underestimate the power of references. So for the road scholarship particularly, they'll ask you for, I don't know, is it four or five referees? So number one, obviously, you make sure you select people who can write substantial things about you, people who know you. I would say, don't go for like, for instance, VC, would be really nice if they can write about you, but then how much do they know about you? So if they don't know much about you and they have a huge title, I would say I would rather go with a referee with a small title, maybe head, head of department or a senior lecturer, and they know more about you, meaning they can write a lot of details about you. So choose someone who can write a lot of substan who can write substantial details about you, because it's really sad if you put all the effort in getting all this information and preparing the best statement and then a referee just writes one sentence or they even forget about it and they don't submit reference it will be really sad so pay attention select someone who you know will write some, some something substantial about you number two and the references or referees is that kind of hand holding them by giving them supporting materials. So I was lucky in my case that the referees that I selected, they knew me personally. I was serving as a class president for five years during my undergrad. And so I got to interact closely with most lecturers. And so the lecturers who I chose, um, referees that I chose, the academic and also the non-academic, they knew me personally and they, they had watched me grow and achieve and accomplish so much over the five years. And so they could write a lot about me. But then if you if you are not too close to the refer referees and some of these referees, they might not even know what the heck this road scholarship is all about. I would say do, do these three things. Number one, prepare a skeleton of your personal statement or your academic statement. Something just to tell, the, tell them who you are, your dreams, your journey, your aspirations for the future, why you want this scholarship. So prepare a skeleton, um, personal statement or academic statement, and then give them your CV. And then number three, you give them a summary, an executive summary about the road scholarship. You make sure you highlight that these guys are obsessed about leadership, about extracurricular activities or using your talents uh, and passions and they want a leadership so you make sure you flash out those three those four and also good grades of course so you make sure you flash out those key elements that the scholarship um, is looking for especially for the referees who might not know what this road scholarship is about so you give them links and then also you can just make an executive summary so i would say you give them those three things um, so that as they write what they know about you they will be having examples to to use i would also say for every, as you write the skeleton, I forgot to mention, as you write the skeleton of your personal statement, you make sure you give examples where you've shown, for instance, in leadership. I think I had mentioned this when I was talking about personal statement uh, before. So I'll, I'll just give this example here. When you're talking about leadership, give maybe three scenarios where you've shown leadership. And then you send these materials to the referee so that when they are writing about you, about you, they'll say Gladys is a leader. And they'll have these examples that you've given them so that they can choose if, if at all they don't have an example where they've seen you leading. So they, at least they'll have some options. And also so that your story, the personal statement that you will submit finally, and the story they write about you will have some parallels. That's my advice. So we've talked about personal statement, you write strong personal statement, 
Number two, you pay attention to referees. Choose referees who can write substantial things about you and then also handhold them. Give them these materials so that they, 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 write, they have things to use or situations to reference as they write the reference. Number three, if you pay attention to all these things and stay authentic and if the scholarship is for you this year, then you'll be shortlisted for the scholarship. You'll be shortlisted. So when you are shortlisted, there is also another episode that I talked about uh, interview tips. You check that out. But if you are shortlisted, these are the things that I think will make you stand out during the interview. Let me just talk about three. I talked, I talked in details about interviewing, interview tips in that episode, so you check it out. But I would say, number one, stay authentic. So you make sure you bring your authentic self, even in the way you write. You write authentically so that when, when I read your personal statement and then when you appear during the interview, you sh they, they should see the same person. Because I think sometimes they would be having your personal statement with them during the interview. And they would be asking you questions from that personal statement. And they should be a mirror of the personal statement, um, the personal statement you wrote and the person that they are interviewing. So stay authentic. Number, number two is confidence. You have to project confidence. I don't think anyone would want someone who is not confident. So you have to believe in your journey, the journey you've walked so far. Even if you have anxiety and butterflies during the day, you have to figure out how to calm down and project confidence sometimes it's fake confidence you are shaking inside but you have to appear confident and you have to believe in your journey that you've you've you've, you've come you've walked and you have to believe in the dreams and in the things you've written and in the in in the contribution you want to leave in the world you have to believe in all those things so you have to project that confidence number three and i think we forget this a lot this is something that i learned recently when i was going through some uh, rigorous interviews is to stay structured the reason why trying to be structured is that you you will make your stories memorable why do we want to make our stories memorable because we want our names and our stories to remain imprinted on their minds after the interview during and after the interview. Again, I talked about different ways of structuring your answers using MISI, which is mutually ex exclusive, collectively exhaustive way, using one, two, three method. When they tell you, Gladys, what do you think are factors affecting ABCD? You see, I think the factors affecting ABCD are number one, number two, number three. Or why do you, why should we consider you for this scholarship? You could say, you should consider me for this scholarship for two reasons. The first reason is this, the second reason is this, right? It, it gives some vibe that this person knows what they are talking about. Even if you are making those things as you go, you are talking of number one when you think of number two. So I would urge you to stay structured, watch the interview tips episode, for more details about how to stay structured. So, I hope you've gained some insights from this video. If you liked this video, consider subscribing. I'll really appreciate. And if there is something I missed or any follow-up questions, you can leave your comment down below and I will answer or I will make another episode addressing some things that I've missed. Thank you so much for staying till the end and all the best if you're applying for the scholarship. Bye.